Okay, let's get started with today's training on how to sell AI ML to federal agencies. Federal agencies know that they need to embrace emerging technologies to stay relevant and to complete their mission. It used to be that federal agencies, DOD in particular, led the charge creating innovation that America needed to stay far in front of our adversaries, right? Now that innovation is being done everywhere and is being used by everyone, federal agencies want to hear from companies like yours. They want to meet you. They want to bring you in in support of their mission. In this training, I'm going to dive into that. I want to help federal agencies by helping you get into the door and talk about your products and services and how you can help these agencies that are out there. Um, in particular, we're going to talk about researching an agency's AIML needs um, in their current state, right? The second thing we're going to talk about is how to find federal buyers who actually uh, want to talk with you about AIML um, as it relates to their particular office or mission and agency. And then finally, I'm going to share tips for getting in agency doors to talk about AIML. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff here. If that's what you're here to learn about, those things I just mentioned, put AIML into the chat. And let me know you're along for the ride and that's what you want to learn. By the way, if you haven't been to um, my trainings before, especially ones like this that are just so much information, this is easily four hours worth of information I'm trying to push into 25 minutes. So it's going to be a fire hose of a fire hose, um, but it's very good information. And if you track along with it, you can always watch the replay. A lot of people do that and they play it on half speed, right? So we're going to have a lot of good fun, but a lot of good tips in here, actionable tips. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to my uh, federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market, and since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. Um, before we get started, do me a favor. Part of our process today is letting buyers know who you are, letting me and letting others in the community know who you are. Put your company name into the chat. Put your core competency, two or three keywords. And a keyword can be multiple words, like artificial intelligence can be a keyword, right? So put two or three keywords that describe what your company does. And in particular for today's training, let me know in the chat, are you doing AI ML? Are you doing emerging technologies? If there's some unique variation of emerging technologies, let me know in there. Um, we definitely have people who watch our training and pay attention to our training from the buyer side, right? And so I want you to track on that. Not that he's here today, but an example is the DOD CIO. Uh, I just noticed a few minutes ago, he engaged with our content about today's training, right? He might not come. He might point it out to somebody else. Or the fact that he gives it a thumbs up might let others on his team know that um, small businesses in particular are here in this training. So let people know who you are. Finally, I want to say thank you to our sustaining members, the GovCon Chamber of Commerce sustaining members. We're not a government agency. We're not funded by the government or large primes. We're self-funded. Uh, sustaining members like you and me, we're the ones who make this training possible for all businesses. And I just wanted to say thank you and let you know that we really appreciate your support. Okay, let's get to that fire hose. The first step of um, selling AIML to federal agencies is research. And I want to start there. Uh, I want to share my screen too. So give me one split second here. Okay. okay so I'm going to um, start here with this screen and then I'm going to jump over to a browser and show you actually a lot of information I found. But first thing I want to start off with is how can you research an agency's current state or, um, you know, where do you begin if you want to get into an agency and start selling them artificial intelligence and machine learning products or services or other emerging technologies like this. And so I'm just giving you in no particular order, um, six examples, right? The first place is uh, White House Communications. They lead the charge for all federal agencies. Although agencies, some of them excel at this, all of them are kind of falling under uh, the White House lead on this. And so you want to look for communications and I'll show you one. Um, White House runs uh, a lot of different committees out there and there's one related to artificial intelligence that you could find. So looking for executive level um, communication and committees. And number one, by the way, that number one bullet, if you don't know this, all federal agencies basically fall up under the White House, the executive office of the president. That is the executive branch. That's where all federal agencies, civilian, intelligent, uh, intelligence or defense, they all fall under the president of the United States, right? So that's why I start there. 
Second place you can go is go to FPDS. Inside of FPDS, you can find previous contracts that were awarded around emerging technologies, AIML, or you can find contracts that are bigger, and I'll talk more about that, um, bigger that might have a component of AIML that you can introduce into the um, into that work stream. The third one is DOD Chief um, Digital and Artificial Intelligence Office. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but this is to me the leader of um, what's going on with artificial intelligence through the government. There are a lot of great entities, agencies, et cetera, doing good work, but this is where, especially on the defense side, they're trying to wrap it all up and have um, this one person lead the charge with all sorts of excellent people on the team. Um, number four, agency chief data offices, and so or data officers, right? Um, often I think to myself that if an agency doesn't have uh, an AI ML office, well, where would that fall under? Certainly under the CIO, but sometimes under the um, CDO, the chief data officer, because when you think about uh, machine learning and AI from my perspective, which is I'm, I don't play at that level, I don't sell it, but really we need data to be able to do excellent work with machine learning or with um, artificial intelligence and data officers are the ones who understand this. And so they'd be a great one to get in and begin to learn about what's going on in your, edge, uh, your agency. The fifth place you can look for information about um, AIML and what's going on in an agency is in SAM. Go look at sources sought, or more importantly, RFIs, requests for information, where they're trying to talk about what's going on out there um, in industry and the commercial side, and the government's trying to learn about it. You can look for open um, opportunities that are coming down the pike. So you can get into SAM. It's got a lot of information about opportunities that are out there, and it's one more place to find where the government is talking about it. And the last one I want to mention is any particular agency go into their budget, their strategic documents, like their strategic plan, their annual report from last year. Guaranteed when you go in there, you're going to see what they're saying about zero trust, which is a big buzzword, right? Cybersecurity, we need to protect it. Data and artificial intelligence, machine learning, emerging technology. Uh, these agencies, all of them are going to be talking about it one way or another in their plans. How do you intend on weaving AI ML into your agency's mission? How do you plan on doing more uh, with that? So one thing before I switch over to the browser and just show you examples of what I just talked about is I created a seven step uh, process for federal revenue success. And the idea is to take a really complex set of process steps and just bring it down into the seven most important steps you need to pay attention to if you wanna sell in the federal government. And frankly, if you wanna sell anywhere, right? But um, you can use this if you're trying to reach out to agencies to sell directly as a prime or you're trying to reach to teammates, but you need to research the information. That's what we're talking about right here in this slide. And then you begin to target, find out the people who are related to AIML that you can um, talk to and outreach is about talking to them. So research targeting and outreach is the beginning of everything that you want to do getting into a federal agency. All right, let me switch over. So what I'm about to show you, a lot of tabs and I only have a few minutes of time. So I'm not trying to keep you here and show you everything that's in here. What I'm trying to show you is the realm of the possible, right? So if I show you the realm of the possible, um, then you can go do it after this training. But what I wanna do is to begin to look for AIML in particular agencies. And so I'm just gonna go through these tabs and show you all sorts of different ways you can be doing your research. So just starting with DHS, right? Here I'm in DHS, I'm doing AI research, looking for it on Google, and I find this document and it talks about right at the top, AIML technology uses for first responders. This is exactly what I want you to think about when it relates to what you sell, product or services. How can your products and services, what problems do they solve? How can they help first responders? How can they help Department of Education or Department of Navy? Whatever it is, right? Um, these guys, it's awesome because inside of DHS, they're talking about how you can use AIML. They're talking about the methodologies. You're beginning to understand how DHS is communicating to itself. Um, down here, they talk about the difference between learning, supervised and learning and uh, unsupervised and how it weaves in. Um, and then down here towards the bottom, you begin to find operational challenges and limitations. This is a lot of good stuff that allows you to keep learning. From that document, I heard about this one, which is their um, uh, science and technology, artificial intelligence and machine learning strategic plan. Going through this document, right? It's gold for what I just said. I wanna be able to learn more about an agency and so in here, I can get, I can start seeing AI ML in DHS's mission context. Exactly what I was just saying. It's like, how does it uh, apply in there? How does it fit in? Where is it going? And then if you scroll down, right, you can start seeing things like they're 
Uh, goal number one, drive next generation AI ML technologies uh, for DHS, basically, right? This is beautiful because you get in there, you read it, you figure out which offices are leading the charge. And so you want to find strategic plans in the agency that you're going after. Here's another way of looking at it, right? I'm just browsing through DHS's website and I'm finding AI use case inventory. And so this is them. Every agency had a mandate from the White House to create something similar to this, where they're creating a use case inventory. Where are you already using AI? Where might you use AI? And so when you come in here, you start seeing, let's go down to like TSA, for example, they've got one example here about airport hotspots uh, throughput. Whatever it is, I don't even care at the moment, right? Not for this training. My point is they're showing me these examples of how it's being used. Here's CBP, and I want to mention that because I'm going to show them again. But here's CBP, Customs and Border Protection. They're showing multiple ways they're able to uh, use AIML. For example, surveillance towers that are watching our border, let's say. They want them to be autonomous so that you don't need a person looking at the border all the time. Our, our agents just go there when they need to go there, for example. So thinking about all these different ways, and I don't care whether you're protecting the border, you're protecting the, the weather, you're doing Department of Education, thinking about what are the use cases you might be able to solve. Just continuing along, this one here is an example of the executive branch. Um, this comes out of the White House, and this is, the, um, this is talking about trustworthy artificial intelligence, but basically ethics in artificial intelligence, because this is a huge dialogue, not today's training. But in here, the reason I'm saying it is you want to find documents like this and begin to understand what's in here, right? DOD's, um, one of the things that I notice is here, we've got a White House document, but they, they say other agencies are already leading the charge. And so here I can find that there's a DOD ethical principles for artificial intelligence. Um, the DNI, right? The principles of Artificial Intelligence Ethics for Intelligence Community. And there's two in there. The reason those documents are really helpful to me as I'm doing my research is I could go in and learn more about um, how AI is being used throughout DOD. And more importantly, who, who are the people who are leading the charge in there? Uh, let me just keep going down. So here's just an article I found related to it. But the reason I liked it is it's talking about sweeping appropriations has an unprecedented investment in AI. Right here, it talks about um, this budget includes record level funding for wide range of artificial intelligence, machine learning initiatives throughout the federal government. And if you go down this article, it highlights what's going on, the different projects, et cetera. And so if I'm, um, excuse me, if I'm trying to go into NASA as an example, here's 1.2 billion related to its space technology mission directorate. I do AI, I wanna support NASA. There's 1.2 billion being run by that directorate. Now I know to go look at that directorate and do more research there. Um, I had four pages open for HHS, but for some reason their site's down <laughs> like over the last 20 minutes. So somebody let me know if it's up, but there's fantastic stuff I was gonna share. Um, here's GSA, right? Switching out of DHS and some of those other places. GSA has a um, center of excellence, a bunch of centers, centers of excellence, but a community of practice around artificial intelligence. And I can come down here and learn more. I can see what's going on, right? And from that document, I or from that site, I then found um, this one, an artificial intelligence governance toolkit. This is GSA communicating to the uh, other agencies, hey, here's how you can roll it out. And if I come down here, 16 pages, I can begin to see other activity that they have. If I was doing AI ML, I might look at this AI stakeholder roadmap and try to just use it as content to agencies I want to get into. Hey, Department of Education, have you seen this GSA thing? I'd love to come in and talk to you about how to use artificial intelligence in your agency according to the GSA standards and our experience, right? Things like that. Um, okay, still moving at a super fast fire hose pace. I'm into DOD. Here, just on DOD, you can uh, go into their spotlights, which is basically blogs. But I'm looking at spotlight on artificial intelligence. And the reason this is fantastic it's because I just have a ton of articles that have been posted recently or over the last year, two years, those are all recent, where they're talking about artificial intelligence throughout DOD. Um, so they're talking about it as it relates to weapons. I think I was listening to somebody, uh, it might've been the CIO of the uh, uh, DOD briefing Congress, and they said something about where have you used AIML the most? And I was thinking all the worlds that I live in, like business systems. And, and I think what he was talking about was they use AIML in the supply and maintenance of Black Hawk helicopters, which is the workhorse uh, of, the, of the military, right? And 
um, just this ability to be able to rapidly do maintenance and repairs and things like that, head off, uh, do predictive maintenance instead of um, reactive maintenance, just this example he was using. And he said he had a lot of other examples. And it's important for us to keep researching our agency, our target agency, and say, what's their top priorities? What's their mission? How does our AI solutions or products um, drive into that? Okay, coming farther forward, this is the um, artificial intelligence uh, site for the DOD. And in here, another bunch of good stuff. Here, they're talking about responsible art, uh, artificial intelligence. That's what RAI is. Um, but these, these are people who are in charge out there, right? And it's stuff that I want to pay attention to. So I can be reading what they're saying and beginning to warm up. I can find these people out on LinkedIn, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, just coming down more, this is still the chief uh, digital and artificial intelligence office. In here, you want to look at reference documents. This is a great place to find all sorts of other documents that lead into what DOD is doing and how you can use it as research. You'll find people's names and offices, program offices that are down low that you wouldn't find anywhere else. You'll find them listed in some of these articles or reports. And so you want to go into it. An example of something I got out of that list was this talent and workforce training catalog. This is DOD's catalog for training its own uh, commands on how to implement uh, digital transformation and artificial intelligence within the, the downstream commands. And the reason I like this is because as I code come down, I can start seeing, let me come down a little bit more, I can start seeing what they're teaching the commands down below. I can even begin to go out and talk to commands and say, I can help you take this document that the CDAO put out and we can help you implement this or your people can learn this and we can help do pilot projects with you, et cetera. Um, don't forget about the Government Affairs Office or GAO or Government Accountability Office. Um, GAO has this great article from last year. Uh, so within a year, basically, artificial intelligence, DOD should improve its strategies, inventory process, and collaboration guidance around artificial intelligence. If you go down through these 89 pages, you not only see what GAO is saying that DOD should do, but now you're seeing GAO's, or excuse me, DOD's response and what they're talking about doing, what we have done, what we're going to do, some of the people who are gonna lead the charge on that. It's a great way to learn about it. And you might find um, similar articles on other agencies like HHS or DHS. Um, this one here is fantastic. Anybody who follows me on LinkedIn knows I put this picture, I put this up on my post today as a way of letting people know about today's event, but also because digital transformation and AI is what these two guys are talking about. This is the CIO on the right-hand side and the CDAO, the Chief Digital and Artificial Intelligence. This guy comes from Lyft. He's coming from the commercial place where it's like Uber, right, Lyft? Um, and he's coming and he's bringing that level of commercialism, big picture, AI, ML implementation into uh, the DOD. I want to hear every single thing he says because I can, you know, maybe I can help him, but more importantly, I can help all the downstream commands or I can take what he's teaching here and bring it to other agencies um, together with what we offer, right? Think about that. Um, okay, some other stuff. Uh, this one here is announcing that DOD that I just mentioned, Craig uh, Craig Martell, is that his name? Uh, I already I keep forgetting it. Yeah, Craig Martell is the, is the CDAO's name. But in here, if you come down, oh, that's funny. If I just kept looking, I would have seen it. But here's all these other people, right? So when you go into documents, you'll begin to find people that are in there. Um, just cruising really fast. So this place is called the Centers for Strategic International Studies. And this is funded in part by DOD. And the reason I want you to pay attention to this is when I'm doing my research, I come across sites like this. I can see that this retired uh, general who was in charge of Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, which is now part of the CDAO office, um, he and the CTO of the CIA wrote an article called Software Divine Defined Warfare, Architecting DOD's transition to the digital age, right? This digital transformation. And in there, they talk about how emerging technologies, AI, ML, are woven in to what they see as the future of DOD and what they need. Um, I might pause right there. Oh, so one more, let me get rid of this stuff here. Um, one more is uh, going on to LinkedIn, right? I can find things going forward. This guy, Sonny, right here, let me just quickly go here. Sonny is the um, CIO of Custom and Border Protection for HHS, or DHS, excuse me. Um, and he wrote this article, which is summarizing other articles within uh, HH or DHS. So here it's artificial intelligence in custom and border protection. And if you come down, he drops these different articles. Um, let me zoom out a little bit because you don't need to see the article. 
And so as I come down, I can find these articles and he puts the links to them, which allows me to go digging in. And I think this third one talks about the CBP innovation team, right? So if I go in there, I'm able to go learn about um, who are these people um, that are related to CBP's artificial intelligence initiative. Anyways, ton of information that I just showed you really quick. Just my point is when it's time to research AI and ML at your agencies, your target agency, or the broader federal government, there's a ton of information. You've got to put the energy in. If you want to make a million, 10 million, or 100 million in AI ML um, in your company, then just take the time to really own it and understand it where it's at. Because then when you start having the conversations, you're able to be a trusted advisor. You're not coming behind the curves trying to ask questions about, you know, hey, are you using AI ML? But you're actually having questions. Um, you're helping lead the conversation on how they can use AI ML to further their mission. Uh, I only got a few minutes left and I want to blow through these other slides to make sure I give them to you at least. Uh, and since I'm sharing it, it makes it easier for you to look at later. But this slide, I was trying to talk about how you can find buyers and teammates. So I talk about research and I gave you a little bit already of showing you where you can find people's names. But the first thing you need to know if you want to find federal buyers or teammates that can work with you on your AI ML services is you need to know what you sell, right? What problems are your solutions or products solving? Um, I, I work with a customer who does AI ML um, and the work that they did had to do with uh, law enforcement people and training them on just, you know, um, how, how to draw your gun and shoot your gun properly. For example, I can't remember what that's called, right? But, but that kind of training, somebody else might do something else. You need to know what problems you solve because by knowing that, you'll then know who to talk to within um, an agency. So uh, really quick, before I go to number three, which is a continuation of one, if you're not familiar with these terms, focus of receptivity, dissatisfaction, and power, um, these people, receptive people are willing to talk with you, right? So the small business professional, small business liaison, et cetera. Focuses of dissatisfaction, anybody in the IT side, anybody on the data side, obviously um, will be able to touch on AI ML. And if they have an AI ML shop, those are the right people. But also focuses of dissatisfaction are like the law enforcement agents and the trainers who have to teach how to pull a gun and shoot it. Or the people who are doing um, HR and they, they need to do training throughout their entire agency. There's ways to use AI and ML everywhere. You just need to know what your problems or what problems your solutions solve. And then you'll be able to find the right focuses of dissatisfaction. But focuses of dissatisfaction have the need and that's who you want to reach. Focuses of power, if you go into FPDS or you go to SAM and you're looking for AI ML type work, for example, the people's names who are listed are those focuses of power. They're the ones who are signing the contract, the contract officers related to projects that um, are AI ML uh, task areas, right? And so those are focuses of power within the AI ML space. So uh, one of the things when you know a dissatisfaction, a focus of dissatisfaction, you want to find out what job titles these people have. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Right now, easy examples are um, anybody with AI ML in their title, right? But I think CDAOs or CD, uh, CDOs, chief data officers, are a great person to start with because they, if they don't deal with AI ML themselves, they will know who to redirect you to. And so they're a fantastic CDO to, or excuse me, um, focus of dissatisfaction to talk with. And then the last one, larger projects might need AI ML. I put an example here. I used to have a project um, where we dealt with employee competencies at a hospital in the VA. And basically what it meant was there was certain general competencies we all must do. Uh, if we see uh, liquid on the floor in the hallway, everybody must stop. And we must know, you know, put a sign up, say wet floor, call the maintenance people, have them clean it properly, whatever. Um, that's general competencies. And then there was specific ones. If I had to be a nurse and give an IV, I had to be able to show that I was competent in my job there on the specific task. Well, I might be able to use AI ML in that area to improve the competencies of the employees. Well, now I know that I want to go talk to maybe the head of nursing or the head of HR who's doing their training. By understanding where it's in there, I can figure out where I fit. And sometimes that activity fits into bigger projects. For example, a $10 billion Cerner project that is migrating paper health records to electronic health records. How can AI ML fit into that, right? a small piece of it, of a much bigger project, but understand how your products and services can fit to a bigger picture. Um, and this last one, just tips for scheduling. And I'm going to go through this really fast because we are tight on time. Um, first thing is uh, get out on LinkedIn, right? 
provide content out there. Let people know. Don't really keep anything to yourself. Nothing information is a secret anymore. People are still keeping information close hold, but I can find anything and share it about AIML. So you should provide this out so that the people who are the buyers and teammates, they'll begin to trust you before they ever meet you. They'll know, like, and trust you because of what you share. Um, teach your FRs and FPs, not to focus as a dissatisfaction, but teach the FRs and FPs about AI uh, ML, right? What is it from a third grade level? Talk to them and let them know that um, artificial intelligence is this. This is typically who we help. You have to teach these people how they can guide you to the right focus as a dissatisfaction. I guarantee you contracting officers, small business specialists are not knowledgeable about this. You have to slowly guide them and help them get there. Show them through example stories if you've done them in different places. Um, I talk about using a call plan. You can watch a different training on that. Um, but the last thing I wanted to say is number four here is create a three-phase approach is my recommendation to you. If you're trying to get into an agency with AIML, in my three phases, if I was going to work with you and get you into an agency, I would break it down saying, hey, give me 50 to uh, 250,000 under the simplified acquisition level, right? Give me um, $250,000 or less to do a proof of concept or a prototype. Um, the second phase might be a pilot project, right? Where we, um, I talk about competencies, but just in this one area. And if we do a really good job and deliver the results you expect, then let's roll out to a full scale project implementation. I can't teach you everything about that here right now in this training, but think of it. Um, that way you're not trying to get this big project, but you're slow walking these customers to a much bigger project with you being the expert at AI ML. Um, okay, so <laughs> I fly through this really super fast. And I just want to wrap up uh, with one tip. If you want to support federal agencies through emerging technologies like AIML, take the time to learn where they're at and how you can help. Don't wait for them to have a need that they put out on SAM. It's way too late for that, right? Instead, identify your target agency, help them learn about AIML, and then plan the implementation ideas with them, kind of how I talked about, consultative selling, right? Do me a favor. If you found today's training valuable, consider becoming a sustaining member of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. Uh, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support with me or my team to go to the next level, if you want help with AIML, consider the BD Accelerator workshop that we have. Um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn for that. And remember, government contracting, it is not a secret. It's just a process. I'll see you in the next training.